Hey, this is Randy, and today we're going to learn how to find the average rate of change of polynomials algebraically. Let's do this. So we are asked the question, what is the average rate of change of the function f of x is equal to 1 over 8 x cubed minus x squared? over the interval from 0 to 2, okay? 0 and 2 are x values. So if we had a graph, like in this case, then our job would be pretty simple because we can just do what we learned last class, right? We just uh, draw a point at x equals 0 on the curve and draw a point at x equals 2 on the curve. And then we draw a straight line in between those, those two points. And then we just find the slope of that line, right? So we could do that right now. Um, down 3, right? 1, 2, 3. And then over 1, 2. So the slope of that line would be negative 3 over 2. However, what we need to learn to do today is to find out that answer, negative 3 over 2, without using a graph. So we're going to try to solve this problem as if we did not have this graph. So real quick, let's agree that y is equal to f of x. y equals f of x. Now, we also know that the formula for slope, um, which will give us the average rate of change, is delta y, or change in y, over delta x, right? So how can we rewrite delta y? Well, we could say y2 minus y1, right? The second y value minus the first y value over x2 minus x1. That is, the second x value minus the first x value. Okay, so just so we can understand this visually, I'm going to identify x2, x1, y2, and y1 on the graph. So because we're in the interval from 0 to 2, um, we can identify those points pretty easily. So the first point, like we talked about, is right there. And the second point is that, so x equals 2, which means that y is right there on the curve, so y would be negative 3. So this point right here is 0, 0, 0, 0. So there we have x1 and y1. x1 and y1 are both 0. And then this second point gives us x2 and y2. In this case, it is 2 to the right, so 2, comma, negative 3. So, right there, we have x2, and right there, we have y2, okay? So, if we had a graph, once again, we could easily just plug in 0, let me uh, draw this arrow again, this 0, x1, would go right there, and this 0, y1, would go right there, and then this 2, as x2, would go right there, and this negative 3, would go right there, and then we would just plug in those four values and simplify, and then we would get negative 3 over 2 for that slope. But we need to figure out how to get those numbers without using the graph. Okay, so let's go back here. We're going to try to get those same numbers using just algebra. Okay, so um, the x2 and x1 are easy because they give it to us in the interval, right? Let me, let me say real quick here, you could also see this interval written a different way. And that way is the following. It could also be written as 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 in this case. So if you see a question phrased like that, um, just remember that this 0 corresponds to that first number in the interval, and this 2 corresponds to that second number in the interval. OK, very good. So let's continue. Well, like I said, we want to try to find a value algebraically for this variable, this variable, this variable, and this variable, and then we'll be able to solve, and that will give us the slope and the average rate of change. So what can we do to find each of these um, values? Well, the x's are easy because this first value in the, in the interval um, corresponds to x1. So 0 is x1. And then the 2 corresponds to x2. 
So there's half our work finished. Let's, uh, let's write that out, and then we'll talk about how to find the y values. So equals, um, we don't know the top values yet, but we know that x2, as we said, is 2. And then the x1 is 0. OK, so there we have x2 and x1. What can we do to find the y values? Well, it's pretty simple. We did this graphically before, but we're going to do it algebraically now. To find the value for y2, all you need to do is take x2 and plug it into the function. Okay. Notice that we have an x right here and right here. So we're going to plug in x2 twice. And then to find y1, um, we're going to do the same thing with x1. So we're going to plug in x1 into that x and into that x. And then we'll be able to simplify and get our final answer. So uh, let's, find, let's find y2 first, because that comes first in the formula. OK, so we're going to plug in um, 2, right, because this is x2, in for that x and for that x. So I'll pause real quick, and then we'll continue. OK, good. So I just plugged in um, that 2 into the formula. So let's, uh, let's simplify real quick. So we have 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 1 eighth is like saying 8 divided by 8, or 1. And then we have 2 squared is 2 times 2 is 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So that negative 3 is our y2. So let's do the same thing now with x1 and y1. And you can see that I put this negative 3 right in there in the place of y2. So it's actually going to be much easier to find y1 because you can see that x1 being 0 um, makes this whole process really simple because when we plug in 0 for x right here, this entire term becomes 0, right? Because 0 to the power of 3 is 0, 0 times 1 eighth is 0, and then minus 0 squared is 0. So this entire expression becomes 0, right? So we can clean this up a little bit. And in this case, when x1 is 0, um, as we just simplified here, um, that will also give us a value of 0 for y1. So let's write minus 0 right there. Now, hypothetically, if we had some negative value for y1, let's say that we had, just um, for the sake of, of clarification, we had negative 3 minus, we'll say, negative 2. Don't forget that this double negative becomes a plus. Um, because you could see some problems like that. So let's simplify our expression now. And so if we have on the top negative 3 minus 0, that can be simplified to be negative 3. And on the bottom, um, 2 minus 0 is 2. And when we have a negative on one of the numbers in this fraction, um, we can rewrite that as um, just a neg negative fraction. That is with the negative in the front. So we can say negative 3 over 2. And you can see now that without using this graph at all, we just found that exact same slope, which is also the average rate of change. So in summary, what we did here was we took the x values from the interval. Um, that is, the first x value became x1, and the second x value became x2. And we used those values. Um, to find the y values by plugging in um, x2 into the function to get y2 and x1 into the function to get y1. And that is how um, you do it. Lo and behold, finding the average rate of change algebraically of a function is actually not that difficult. And with that, we are finished with this lesson. And remember to always be clever. Hey.